building your author platform right after the intro. Hi, I'm John Gilstrap, author of the Jonathan Grave Thriller series, and soon enough, the Victoria Emerson Thriller series, the first of which, Crimson Phoenix, you can see over my shoulder here, comes out in February of 2021. So today we're going to talk about, I think, one of the things that people dread most when it comes down to the, the marketing business of trying to sell your book, and uh, both to a publisher or to an agent, and then afterwards trying to sell it to the public, and that is this whole notion of building your platform. Well, the question comes up all the time. Do you have to have a platform before you can attract an agent or an editor? And, you know, the, the, rea the, the real answer to this is it helps to have a platform. We'll talk about what it is here in a second. But to not have one is not a deal breaker. So what is a platform? What a platform is really is something that you've already got. It's a group of people who are interested not necessarily in your books, but are interested in you. Folks who are interested in seeing you succeed. Um, these are people from your church, your fellow Masons, uh, Rotarians, uh, I don't know, uh, PTA members. The idea is to have a, a network, I think network and platform are pretty much the same thing, of people who are uh, ready and willing to uh, take a look at what you've done and uh, maybe buy a book. What it is specifically not is a group of people who are guaranteed to buy your book. And it is specifically not just hammering out messages on social media saying, I've written a book, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. That's not, that's not a platform. That's just annoying. So what is a platform? Or, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's how do you contact your readers or your future readers and keep them engaged in what you're doing. So in this video, I'm going to present a number of different strategies that all ultimately work together and, and we'll, we'll see what happens. The first step is to have a website. You know, all things, all items get driven to your website. Uh, that's where people can find out not just about your books, lose the notion of this being a hardcore sales thing. This is, in, in these days, people like to, to think that they know authors. They like to, uh, you know, anybody in the public eye, it's kind of a personality business or it's an interest business. You, you know, if your book is about quilting, then obviously you have links to quilts and, and that kind of stuff. Um, my book or my, my websites are, or my website is about you know, certainly about my books, but there's a lot about me and my background, the fact that I'm a safety engineer and a former firefighter and, and you know, all, all of that. And I also have uh, on my website, there are, are links to articles on how to sell your writing. There's a couple of short stories or some anecdotes and lots and lots and lots of pictures. So what the website is the starting place. Everything that you do in these next steps that I'm going to talk about, everything is to drive people to the website. And nobody should have an opportunity to leave your website without an opportunity to sign on for your mailing list. The mailing list is golden. That's the key. That's, that's the holy grail to this business and to having a, uh, any, any kind of a platform or any kind of a network. If you have, I don't care how many likes and follows and you know, whatever else on, on social media, those um, friends, th those, those, uh, those names belong to the social media outlet. They do not belong to you. So if you leave Facebook or any of the others, you lose all that information, all, all, the, all those contacts. So what you want to do is get people to come to your website and sign up for your mailing list. You capture their email address. You can capture more than that if you want. I, I don't see a reason to know first and last names of, of everybody who reads my books or is interested in getting a newsletter. But, um, you know, if, if, if that's what you want to do, then that's fine. But ultimately, at the end of the day, everything that I'm going to talk about today drives people back to your website. Okay? Now we're going to get to the second part. You gotta have a business card. 
you got to have something to give to people when you meet them and say, hi, I'm, I'm John Gilstrap and I hand them my business card and, and on it, my business card says, John Gilstrap, author. Now, more times than not, that leads to the kind of question of, oh, you're an author, what do you write? And then we can get into that kind of soft sale sort of thing. We'll talk about that a little later in this video. Uh, but you also want to use your business card as a way to leverage other people's business cards. So if I'm at a social event, and this isn't, you know, you, I'm not an insurance salesman, okay? So I don't go and, and lead with the card with everybody I meet. But you have a, a, a quick discussion with somebody, and they want to know who you are, and you hand the business card, and it starts a discussion. You get their business card in return with permission to add them to your mailing list. You know, if it's Joe Jones is, is the attorney in your town, and you're talking to each other and he hands you the business card, you just say, hey, Joe, very nice to meet you. Do you mind if I add you to the mailing list? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna say, sure, no problem. Uh, in, in part, maybe because they're intimidated. You know, they feel kind of forced into it, but they can always, they can always opt out later if, if that's what they wanna do. But a business card is also a way to leverage other people, a way to leverage experts business cards. I have a whole collection. Actually, I reduced them to a, a database. But I have a whole selection of, I don't know, judges and, and attorneys and soldiers and cops and detectives and, you know, all kinds of different people from different walks of life that will really help me and with, with the research that I have to do. And when I get their card, I say, well, this is really interesting. Do you mind if one day in the future, I don't know when it'll be, uh, if I give you a call and maybe you can help me out with a problem? And, and always, Always people say that there's no problem with that. I also put, just for grins, I don't even see it, I also put the uh, titles of my books on the back of the business card. I don't talk about that a whole lot. Okay, we'll talk about the next step right now. Like it or not, you're gonna to have to learn to work a room. This writing thing, if you're trying to make a living or trying to make money off of writing, this is your business. And it might not be your primary business, but it is certainly a business and you need to treat it as such. So get over your fear of meeting people. Hard to say, but there you go. Um, when you get a chance to, to meet people, have a plan to work the room. My plan is this. I meet somebody and I, first of all, I love to meet other people. I love to learn about other people. Uh, I get tired of talking about me, quite honestly. Uh, so you know, we chat people up and, and find out what they do and, and people love to talk about themselves. Um, I genuinely care about people and I, and, I, and I like to meet them. Well, sooner or later, the topic will come around to me and they say, well, what do you do? I say, well, I, I, I write books. Oh, really? What books do you write? And Here's where it, it gets, you got to be a little bit careful because that question, what kind of books do you write? It's sort of obligatory and many people really don't care. So you say, my, I write thrillers, commercial thrillers. And they say, oh, that's very nice. Um, have you read such and such an author? And then we'll end up talking about somebody entirely different and that's fine. But on the occasions when they do say, um, well, tell me more. Well, I write about Jonathan Grave, freelance hostage rescue. So you, I've got the, the, the 10 second answer. And then if they want to talk about it more, it builds into a 30 second discussion. And then, and then we move from there. And what do I do then? I give them a business card because all things lead back to the website and to the mailing list, right? So I give them a business card. It shows them how to get to my website. I ask to get their business card in return. I ask them if I can put them on the mailing list and rinse and repeat, okay? So working a room is, is a strategic thing when it comes to building your platform. Get to know your local bookseller. Uh, especially if you're an independent author, it's going to be very, very difficult, or self-published, it's going to be very difficult to get shelf space in any bookstore. It just is. It's difficult to get shelf space for any author, whether it's traditionally published or, uh, or, or self-published. But, you know, if you're the community where you live, you should know who your booksellers are, particularly the independents. The, the big chains, their hands are kind of tied about what they, for what they can put on their shelves and what they can't. But for the independent booksellers, chat them up, get permission to, um, to, to stock your books or ask them if they would stock your books. You might have to do it on consignment. Um, and then see if they will let you sign books in their store. 
Now there's a strategy to book signings. And here the key to the, the, the bookstore strategy and the book signing strategy is to get yourself a bookmark. There it is without the glare on it. Okay, two sides in this one. Uh, this is from two books ago. I'm, I was talking um, uh, Total Mayhem, which also came out at the same year that we re-released Nathan's Run. And so here's what you do. What you'll find during a book signing, it's always sort of entertaining, uh, people will walk 300 yards out of the way to keep from confronting the author at that front table. Nobody wants to have to tell them, well, no, I don't read your genre, or I don't like your books, or I don't read this, I don't read that. They just, they, they don't want to be forced into picking the book up and taking a look at it. I get that. I do that too. What I do is I walk around the bookstore and I hand people bookmarks. And I say, hi, you know, my name's John Gilstrap. I'm the guy at, at, at the front of the room there and I'm not trying to pressure you into doing anything. You know, just, I wanna show you, this is me. This is uh, my, my bookmark. It's got all of my social information on it, right? This is, this is another version of a business card. It just has pictures and it's a little bit more complete. And it's, it certainly hawks the book that I'm selling at the time. Now, it's a very short conversation. It, it may grow into something more, but generally it's a very short conversation. And I leave the bookmark with them and I walk off. And 100% of the time, I guarantee 100% of the time, if nothing else, within 30 seconds, they are going to be Googling you to find out what your books are about. So that all goes back where? To the website. And while they're on, their, on your website, they find out who you are and, and what you do and whether or not you're, you're actually, you know, you've got any readers or if you're really an author. Um, and then, I don't know, I don't know what the hit rate on that is. It's not very high. Uh, the, they may come circle around to the table and pick up the book and buy one. You don't know. But if nothing else, you have an opportunity to get their business card to add them to the list or you have already sent them to your website and they've already been requested by the website to leave their contact information so that they can be part of your list. You see in this, all right, it's all one great big circle back to the website. Let's talk about conferences. It's one of the number one networking opportunities that you will find is book conferences in your genre, preferably. Um, I've, I've done a video on how to, uh, about writers conferences and such. I will link to that here uh, in, in the, in the uh, description of, of this video. So I don't want to rehash a lot of that ground. But the point in, when you're going to be going to a conference is know why you are there. You know, if you're, if you're there trying to meet authors, to maybe get blurbs for your books in the future. That's, that's, that's one way. If you want to meet industry people, uh, editors and agents, they're all over the place, particularly at the larger conferences. And um, always have, what, a business card. So whenever you meet anybody, particularly if it's from the industry, if you're talking to an agent or an editor or what have you, you exchange the business cards. It does not get you out of the slush pile. It does not guarantee anything unless in your discussion, your casual discussion with the agent, the agent then says, well, that sounds interesting. Why don't you send me something? That's the home run. Now, now you're not in the slush pile anymore. You send an email to them. You say, we met at the conference. Make sure that that's in the, in the subject line. And if nothing else, you're going to get a fair read. 100% of all business in this business, 100% of all business, certainly at conferences, is conducted at the bar. You don't have to drink but you have to go to the bar. It is not conducted, it's great. You go to these conferences and you wanna sit in, in the panel discussions and hear people talk about characterization, all that kind of stuff, that's great, that's great. Just be at the bar later. Like I say, you don't have to drink, but that's where everybody is. So you'll meet agents and editors and, and, and what have you. The biggest mistake I see people make when it comes to attending conferences is that they hang out with the wrong crowd. And I don't mean that to sound elitist, but if you're a rookie, why the hell do you want to hang out with other rookies? You know, work your way into a crowd of people with experience that, that, that can help you. Not be aggressive or obnoxious, but just hang out, listen to the discussion, participate in the discussion. If the opportunity comes around, hit them up with a business card. And where does a business card send them? To your website, and they can check you out. All right, we got one more to come. One of the easiest changes you can make to increase your, your network 
and to increase your platform is to change your signature block on your email and say that you are an author and include a link to your website, include a link to your mailing list, include a link to your social media. So I don't care who I'm sending an email to. It can be to the plumber. It could be to you know, the IRS, I hope not. Uh, it could be to any organization and the signature block always says John Gilstrap, thriller author, blah, 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 blah. So people are interested in this stuff. I don't know. The hit rate on that is probably very low. I, I don't know a way to, to track it, but it's, it's just a way to constantly, it's kind of a low key sales effort. So folks, this has gone on way, way, way too long. So the bottom line on this, this whole networking platform building thing is relax. It's what you do anyway. You're getting to know people, right? If you're just adding some organization to it. You wanna make sure that you have a website. You wanna make sure that you have a business card. You wanna make sure that you have a strategy. When you, when you visit a bookstore, you have a strategy when you work a room, when you go to conferences. And you make sure that you're easily visible when, when you send out emails. It can be that simple. These things add up. There is no way, think of this as a lifelong effort. There's no way that you can do this. You can't build a platform in two weeks before your book comes out. You can't build a platform by, you know, some of these Twitter bombs that you get where you pay, pay money and then they get you, you contacts or um, followers or whatever it is you have on Twitter. It doesn't work because it's, it's not organic. It's just, it's just names. You want to collect names of people who know who you are and are interested in what you do. It's that simple, and frankly, it's that difficult. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoy this, please subscribe. Uh, author John Gilstrap, um, I am John Gilstrap. You take, 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 you take care, I'll get this right. You take care, please keep reading. I am John Gilstrap.